So we're just gonna get back on track. Well, that was a bit of an adventure. Yeah, zombies aren't gonna go destroy a power plant. I'd love to know your feedback, and I'm I'm honestly blown away. Now I'm panicking. Have I sent one this year? Oh, what did I do? Well, hello, 4,444 of you. and welcome to a new vlog. Welcome if you're new here. Hi, I'm Andrea. Welcome back if you're one of my lovely returning friends. It is great to have you all here. It is Friday. It's Friday, July 19th. I'm so ready for the weekend. <laughs> it feels like it's been such a busy, hectic week. I'm really ready to like just relax. I've been trying to be a bit strict about my weekends and like no work on the weekends, truly just letting myself relax. Because during the week, I'm I'm relaxing and resting a lot of the days, but there's also, I'm, like, I'm, I feel like I'm getting behind on work. Like there's just things that I'm trying to get ticked off my list and then another day goes by and that thing still hasn't been ticked off my list. And obviously my lists are guides. They're not firm rules, you know, my, my task lists can change, deadlines can change. It's summer, for those who are new here, I'm a full-time writing instructor, but I'm currently on summer break from university. So like, my work during the summer is entirely my own. I set these deadlines, I set these goals, I can rearrange things and be flexible, but I'm, as a lot of you have noticed, <laughs> I'm a very driven person <laughs> and it wasn't always that way. I wish I could go back to not being so driven because that was actually kind of nice. But yeah, I'm feeling like I'm behind on things and it's a constant back and forth in my brain of you're behind, but you control the deadlines. So it's okay, but I'm behind. It's a very loud place in my brain most days. And so when I do find that I'm giving myself a break during the day on a weekday. I can feel really guilty about that, even though it's summer and this is my time to do nothing if that's what I want to do. The problem is, is like half my brain wants to do nothing and the other half of my brain wants to publish this book. And those are very conflicting wants and desires. So yeah, it's just, it's been a very hectic week because then this week, as you saw in the last vlog, I also had my two syllabi for my five classes in the fall. So I got them submitted, there were a couple revisions that were requested, really easy fixes that just weren't on the form that we had to fill out, so I didn't know that that needed to be in there, but once I knew I added them really quickly, like it took me less than five minutes to fix both syllabi and resubmit them, and then they were approved. So that part of the process went super fast. Now that is checked off my list. There's still things I need to do to both syllabi, but as far as the department is concerned, they've been approved. Um, they just need to be completely finished in terms of everything that I want to add by the beginning of the semester. So teaching work is back on pause until probably about August 12th. So I really need to make the most of the time between now and August 12th, which is three full weeks and today, <laughs> basically. Um, so I need to kind of make the most of the next few weeks. And I think in the next few weeks, I really want to have all the book data done. I want to get the cover done or at least have it be down to like little finishing touches in Photoshop and be like partway through the proofreading. I think by August 12th, if I'm still putting finishing touches on the cover in Photoshop and if I'm proofreading like the second half of the book, I can I can manage those things while also starting to get back into teaching work. So I've got I've got time, but like I finished so like I've got time, but as we'll talk about later when I give you the book update, I've not made as much progress in the last week as I had wanted because I was so distracted by teaching work. So 
I'm not behind schedule, but I've gone from being a week ahead of schedule to being back like right on schedule. So yeah. And that's one of those things I could make myself feel guilty about not doing book work this past week. Like I should have to stay ahead of schedule, but I also really don't regret the time I gave myself to rest. So yeah, anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> I spent that time how I spent it. I did spend a lot of this past week working on teaching work, so there's not much I can do about that. So we're just gonna get back on track. But first, I need to go to Whole Foods. Mom is on her way. She should be almost here, so I need to get my shoes on. Oops, she's calling me right now. Hi. Okay, I'll be down in a minute. Where are you at? Okay, bye, love you. So yeah, let's go to Whole Foods, and then we will, um, after that's done, at some point today, I will sit down and we'll give we'll talk about book work and all of that stuff. And today there's just a lot of admin work. There's a lot of book project admin, there's a lot of life admin, there's a lot of business admin for my coaching and editing business, all of that stuff. So there's just a lot of little things that weren't able to get ticked off the list earlier this week because of syllabus work. And I just wanna get all of them ticked off the list so that I can have my weekend, really relax and enjoy it, and start Monday feeling like I'm in a good place and not feeling so overwhelmed. So yeah, welcome to a Friday where we try to get all the little things done. <laughs> Well, that took a lot longer than it was supposed to yeah. and was a bit of an adventure. We got all the way to Whole Foods and found out that they were accepting cash only because of the worldwide IT outage. Let me know if, in the comments if you got impacted somehow by the worldwide IT outage. Their registers were working enough to accept cash so when we first got there, we saw the parking lot was like almost empty and there were a couple Whole Foods employees standing out front. So we pulled up, we didn't park, we pulled up and rolled the window down and they told us they're open, but cash only. I had enough cash on me, but mom didn't, but I had more cash back in my apartment. So this is like, this is why you have a, a supply of cash just for emergency. So I had cash for an emergency situation. This wasn't quite the emergency I was thinking of, but it still works. So we went back to my apartment, picked up more cash so that mom would have enough. Um, Cause mom did have some yeah, cash on her. Family. That's a switch. That's not normally how it is. So yeah, mom had some cash on her, but not enough. So we yeah. went back, got some more cash. Um, now mom owes me money, which that also usually doesn't happen. And she only wants it in cash. I only want it in cash because I want to just get my cash supply back up. So yeah, we got back. They were still cash only. We kind of thought it would be our luck that we would take the time to go get more cash and then we get back there and their cards would be working. But no, they were still cash by the time we got back, by the time we did our shopping, by the time we got up to the register. Managed to get our grocery shopping done got you know, paid for everything with cash. This is like I was talking about a few vlogs ago. Like, we're so used to computers, we forget how things used to be done. 
and it used to be common to pay for everything in cash or with a check at the most. If you didn't have cash, you probably had a checkbook. It just got me thinking, all the places we went to in London, because this is a worldwide thing, all those places in London that are card only, yeah. Yeah. what are they doing today? Like, oh. Okay, you're losing a lot of business. I mean, the the people I feel the worst for, it's it's grounding flights. So the people I feel the worst for today are all the people well, at airports. Surgeries working and so. that too. Like, so like on the scale of inconveniences today, we were like the least inconvenienced. This was not really a problem. I'm sure there are people who are being really significantly impacted, but it just shows how much technology is ruling our lives. And once upon a time, an IT outage like this wouldn't have even been a thing. And... Well, we've had that before. We've been at Whole Foods where their, their systems went. Yeah. Down, but it was just them. It yeah. It wasn't like you couldn't get cash out of an ATM machine because the banks were all down. But in my vlog a few vlogs ago, I was talking about how, like, I'm old enough I'm young enough that technology is a huge part of my life, but I'm old enough that I remember when it wasn't. And so when the robot revolution comes, I'm still kind of prepped to go analog there you go. again. <laughs> Mom's definitely prepped to go analog. Mom totally remembers <laughs> what it was like before computers. But yeah, that was a bit of excitement today. Again, there are people today, I'm sure, who this is not fun excitement. You this isn't anything a, different. A, a this is a huge inconvenience. Yeah. I do need a radio, a battery operated radio, because I they don't have, have one of those. For emergencies yeah. Are don't they have some that are like hand cranked so they don't even need batteries? They might. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That's what I need. Got all those survival people. Yeah, there's people who are ready for the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I'm just ready for when there's a major IT outage like this and everything shuts down. Because, yeah, wouldn't technology still be around for a zombie apocalypse? As long as there are people who can keep the technology going, as long as power plants can keep yeah. providing electricity. Yeah. So I guess that depends on how much the power plants the are, are ready for the are, zombie apocalypse. thinking enough to go destroy. Yeah, zombies aren't going to go destroy a power plant. Yeah. So as long as our power plants are relatively autonomous and don't need people there to power them. But then you probably have the hackers who hack into the system. Yeah. Take them all down. <laughs> anyway, um, you can tell we're a couple of writers. <laughs> our brains go places that in a normal situation, like there's not going to be a zombie apocalypse. But I do sometimes worry about... IT outages like this because everything is controlled like this is all down to one company having an outage and then every other company that uses that one company is now having an outage and so it just shows you technology is great until that one link in the chain falls apart so yeah anyway we're we're now done Whole Foods is done but it's 10 30 I think that took us I think that put us behind by about at least 30 minutes. It's fine. We'll we'll make up that time and if something doesn't get done today, it doesn't get done today and that won't be the end of the world. But say goodbye, mama. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>
I was trying to get a bunch of like little stuff just knocked out so I'd feel better. And I do, it worked, because it's not even one yet. And I've crossed off some pretty big things from my list. So I needed to get Monday's vlog finished. I'd done most of the editing yesterday, which I felt really good about, but I needed to do the music today. Got that done. I'd gotten the music for the bit done. Um, I wanted to talk about this on the vlogs. <laughs> wanted to talk about this today because I've been doing it for a few weeks but it was the last vlog that went up so two vlogs ago is when a few of you finally commented on it and gave me some feedback so as you'll have noticed I've if you've been a regular viewer I've started putting little like teasers or previews of what is coming in the vlog I've been doing it for I don't know how many vlogs exactly. So this one that we're filming now is probably maybe the fifth or sixth that I've done this on. I've been doing it for a few vlogs now. There's a few reasons I'm doing it. Um, one, I've seen other people do it. I just really like it. Like as a viewer, I like it in other people's vlogs. Another reason is it is advice that you'll see being given to content creators. It's a good way to kind of hook in an audience. Your first 30 seconds are kind of when people decide if they're gonna keep watching or not. So I wanted to see, just test it out and see if it impacted my view duration and how long people stick with it. Typically with my videos, there's a pretty big drop off in the first 30 seconds and that's normal. There's people who click on your video and sometimes they didn't mean to click on it or they click on it and it just there's something about you I guess that in the first 30 seconds the person's like yeah I don't want to watch this after all but a lot of times like we're such a short attention span culture these days that if you don't have some sort of hook within the first 30 seconds people aren't going to keep watching. And so I feel like when it comes to my core audience, you all stick with me. You know I'm chatty and rambly and it might take me a few minutes to like really get into things, but it's worth it to keep watching. But for a new audience member, someone who's this is the first video they're clicking on, having that 30 second, 30 to 40 seconds of teaser, preview, this is what's coming up in this vlog, might be the thing that gets them to stick around. I just thought I'd give it a try. I love that so many of you, or at least a few of you, who are regular viewers have commented to say, hey, I actually really like this, because it wasn't, you all weren't the ones I was worried about, you all are here and watching no matter what. So I'm glad you're enjoying it because I didn't want the addition of it to be something that my regular viewers were like, you're wasting time, just get to it. So the fact that you're liking it makes me feel really good. Um, so I'd love to know if you're watching this and you're still with this vlog. I think we probably are like 15, 20 minutes in by now. I'd love to know your feedback. Are you an existing viewer? Like, have you been watching for a month or two or three or more and you like it? You like the little previews of in this vlog dot dot dot. Are you enjoying it? Or are you a new viewer and is it something that got you to keep watching? Were you not previously subscribed and this is your first video or maybe your second or third video, but it was that little preview bit at the beginning that got you to keep watching and did it get you to subscribe um, after continuing to watch and then finishing a whole vlog? Um, so yeah, feedback, would love to know. But I'm, I'm enjoying um, editing them. They do take a few extra minutes to edit them. It does add a bit to my editing process, but overall I'm enjoying it. Um, I like how they turn out. I, I'm, I really like the beginning of the vlogs now, because um, sometimes because I'm so chatty and rambly, sometimes I do worry about the intro clips of a vlog and 
are they engaging enough to keep you watching if you're not one of my regular audience members who just knows that that's how I am. So yeah, I had had that section, um, the beginning and the rest of it was already edited. I put music on the beginning of this vlog, of the vlog I'm editing, um, but it needed music for the rest. So that's now done. The vlog is being exported. We're good to go. I've also paid my bills for the month. So yay, including some medical bills. I had one bill from my CTE. There was just a small, well, not that small, but there was an amount that insurance didn't cover. So I've paid that. I've also submitted some receipts to my FSA to get reimbursed for healthcare stuff. So that's all done. I've done my 15 minutes on LinkedIn um, for the day. So I've been able to cross that off. And yeah, I think... There's a few little things I want to still do. Um, there's like two more 15 minute sprint things I want to do. I want to do a little bit of work on my website and I want to um, post on Instagram. Um, but those two things I can do later in the day. Um, Instagram is usually a good thing to like take a break and do in the middle of a bigger task where I just need to like <laughs> take a break. So I think I think I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. So I'm gonna go get something to eat, but then I think I'm gonna do some book work. So I want to pull up my book data publishing checklist, like where I'm writing down my book description and figuring out my title and all of that stuff. I need to, need to look at that. I'm narrowing down the title list. So I think I need to, where did I put that? Yeah, I need to narrow it down further because I've gotten some feedback from three friends. Um, so I need to cross out the options that they just didn't like at all. I'm not going to pick a title today, but I'm going to try to narrow it down even more. And yeah, just want to get stuff ready and also do some cover sketching today. So yeah, want to try to work on book stuff for at least an hour. We'll we'll see. I'm doing okay. I'm actually doing great. Like I'm tired, but I had a bit of a bit of a mood boost. I'm doing pretty good today because I checked my sales dashboard for KDP and I sold some more books, which makes me very happy. I mentioned this before um, a vlog or two ago. I just, I, I th feel like I do want to start being a little bit more conscious about like thanking you all. If you were someone who on July 18th, and I'm assuming it's the same person, but I suppose it could be two or three different people. But yesterday, July 18th, three paperbacks, one of each of the three across the pond <laughs> books. <laughs> um, yeah, three paperback sales popped up. Um, I'm assuming, I think they're all paperbacks. But yeah, it, either way, three sales. One, one of a brave start, one of brave with you, and one of brave together all popped up yesterday. So I think they're paperbacks. And so I think that means they would have shipped on July 18th. So if you bought a copy, bought one each of all three across the pond books and they shipped on July 18th. If that's you, thank you. Thank you. Um, I get just June's July so far has like June was a good month. And then so far July has been an even better month. And I'm, I'm honestly blown away. If we could keep this up, <laughs> it would be amazing. If we could keep this up, Going to England next summer is looking a lot more possible if if each month is like this and gets better. And like, I just keep thinking like next month, hopefully I can keep pushing across the pond as we get closer to book four releasing. And then September should be launch month. So launch months usually are pretty good months for me. So just kind of speaking honestly about my book sales. Usually each month I sell at least a few copies, but I'm not someone who sells like minimum a dozen copies each month or a minimum 50 copies each month. Like I'm not someone who usually sells a specific number each month. I'm lucky if I sell at least a few copies 
each month and have a few hundred pages of Kindle Unlimited pages each month. I, I really don't make that much money each month consistently. And there have been months where I haven't sold any books. Um, I think April was one of those months. I think April was, and that was the first month. April was the first month since I started publishing where I didn't sell even one copy. Usually I'm selling at least two or three or four copies a month. So that's not that much. That's not really like, maybe I'm covering, you know, it, typically I'm covering my Netflix subscription at least every month. Like that's the amount we're talking about. So to be selling, this month I've had 13 orders and that's outside of a launch month, that's really good. So if I could be getting, you know, 12 to 15 orders a month, it's, it's not life changing amount, but that much a month, every month, it adds up. So yeah, just thank you. If you've bought a Kindle book, bought a paperback book, or read any of my books in Kindle Unlimited this month, in the month of July, or back in June or May, thank you. Like, again, I just need to be more, I need to thank you more often, but thank you, because it, it, it makes me so happy. Like, I literally do a happy dance here at my desk every time I refresh my sales dashboard and see progress. It makes me so happy. It is one of the things about being an indie author that I like. I feel like when you're traditionally published, you I think you get like a report maybe quarterly from your publisher, but I see pretty much in real time every sale, every Kindle Unlimited page. I can see how many pages and that just makes me happy. Like that just makes me so happy. I love I love seeing the Kindle Unlimited pages, like seeing, wow, someone's reading my book today. That's really cool. <laughs> So as an indie author, I can see pretty much in real time how many pages someone is reading or how many books are being sold. And I do a happy dance every time I see movement in one of those categories. So yeah, thank you. Because it, it really does mean the absolute world to me. And I, I really want to go back to England next summer and I want to vlog it for all of us, myself included. And every sale, every, every penny I make in AdSense revenue from these videos puts me and us one step closer to us being able to go to England together again next summer. So yeah, that was, when I see like three, three orders in one day, it just like, it, that just blows my mind. I just want to make sure you all know I, I never ever take you and your support of these videos and of my books. I never take it for granted. It just means the absolute world to me. So yeah, that was something I just, it's like habit refresh to like check my dashboard every day and some days at zero and today at zero but I scrolled down to see the last 30 days and saw a huge spike for yesterday and I must have missed it they probably posted after I checked for the day and so yeah it's exciting but I need to go get something to eat and then I need to start working on I think book data um, description title all of that stuff. Oh, acknowledgements, author's note, that's what I wanted to spend some time working on. That needs to get written. So yeah, I'm gonna spend some time working on all of those things. We'll see how long that takes me. I think I'm at work on that. It's just about to be 1 p.m. So I'm at work on that from one to two, and then we'll just see where things stand at about two o'clock.
need to get my charger. <laughs> we are running out of battery charge. Okay, where are we at? I have 830 words of an author's note written, so that's good. I think all the front matter is done other than the title. So now I'm working on the back matter. The author's note I think is almost done. I feel like there's more I want to say, but my brain's running out. So I'm probably gonna switch to writing the acknowledgements um, and see if I can get a big crack at that done. I don't have to have the finished version of either of these things done. And I think I will probably just write down some notes I think I want to try to get all of this put into vellum on Monday and start formatting the book on Monday. I, my habit typically, as much as I'd love to have everything done before I start proofreading so that the entire, you know, book manuscript, book interior is written and I'm just proofreading it, that's never how it works out. I'm always proofreading the main part of the manuscript but I'm still writing and editing the front matter and the back matter. So those kind of get proofread separately at the very end. So as I'm going through and reading things during the proofread, if I see something and I'm like, oh, I should talk about that in the author's note, I make a note and then add that to the author's note. But I just wanna have I want to take a stab at it and have the majority of it done before I start formatting and proofreading. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave the author's note for here. I'm just going to make a note. And as I come up with more ideas of things, it doesn't need to be that much longer. It's honestly probably a decent length, but I just feel like there are things about the story I wanted to still talk about. I did get out Brave Together. I was looking through the acknowledgments, the author's note of that to see like, is there anything more that I need to write? Probably need to reference some of the crossover moments. Because when you write books in multiple series, if you can reference characters in the other series, do it. I love when other authors do it, so I definitely do it. And there are a few crossover moments in this. So that is some incentive. If you read one series, you might also want to read the other series. You'll understand them. You know, you'll understand this story even if you've never read Independent Hearts, but if you're caught up on Independent Hearts, there will be some references in here that that you'll get. Just like if you've read this series and you've now read Independent Hearts, you'll notice that like in Candle Shop there were references to Across the Pond characters in book three of Independent Hearts, and I will keep doing that. All of these books, I've also referenced More Than Fate in both series. I've mentioned More Than Fate in the Across the Pond series. I've mentioned the main character, Isla Stewart, in Across the Pond, and I've mentioned Isla Stewart in Independent Hearts. Isla Stewart is the character that I wrote in More Than Fate. So it, you don't have to have read all of my books to understand each series, but for those of you who do read all of my books, I like putting in little moments where you'll recognize characters even if they're not part of this series because you've you've read the other series. I definitely want to mention those. So I know there's still things that I'm mentioning in, that I want to mention in the author's note, but I think I'm ready to create a page for the acknowledgements and start writing those. I always save auth the author's note and the acknowledgements for last. Um, I, it probably would be helpful to like be keeping track of things to say in the author's note while I'm writing the book, but I never do. It's always something that comes up, that I come up with at the very end. It's one of the last things I do. It gives me something fun to write once I'm like done writing new content for the book. And it just, it's, it's something that makes it feel like we're getting close to the end. Like it's, it's time to write the acknowledgements. It's time to write the author's note because there's not that much left to work on with these books. And it's, it's almost done. Like it just, I know I've said this before, but I, I just can't believe, I can't believe that 
this is going to be out within two months probably make sure this is your reminder your we're getting close reminder um if you are not subscribed to my email list yes i know i haven't sent out an email and i don't know how long have i sent one this year now i'm panicking have i sent one this year i need to log into my mailer light when was the la when was the last email that i sent I've been meaning to do one for a very long time. <laughs> I really think it might have been last year that I sent my last email. I don't know that I have sent one. I had to switch to a new mailer light in February and I don't think, I'm tr struggling to see. I don't think, okay, it'll be in my email. Ah, I can't find it. I right, but I do think it's not been since last year. Yeah, y'all, I'm so bad. I'm such a bad author. <laughs> I'm a great writer, I'm a bad author. <laughs> I'm bad at the author business, the business side of being an author. I honestly, the only email I can find is from November when Candle Shop launched. I honestly think that was my, so subscribe to my email list because you'll probably only get an email when books launch, I don't seem capable of writing newsletters newsletter otherwise. Oh my gosh. I really need to be better about that. I really need to be better about that. That's embarrassing. Like that's honestly embarrassing. <laughs> so, oops. Yeah, the, uh, the link, the link to subscribe to my newsletter is in the description box. It should be the link to the new one. Now I need to check that. I will check that in a moment and make sure that the link that is there is the link you all need <laughs> to subscribe to my newsletter. Um, let me check this. Copy. Oh man, you know. I'll feel like I'm doing really good and I'm keeping up with things and then yeah okay that seems to work but is that the right link I don't know <sighs> all these things I have to check oh oh no 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 oh what did I do I did something I I'm done I'm done for the day. I think I just screwed something up <sighs> on my website. <laughs> well, by the time you're watching this vlog, I will have sorted out this problem because I'm going to fix it right now. The link in the description box will be the link that you need to sign up for my newsletter. Please sign up for my newsletter. I clearly do not spam you with emails. If you want to be the first to know when this book launches, you will want to be signed up to my email list. But yeah, I'm going to go fix this now and then I'm going to try to write, at least start writing my acknowledgements. And it's 2.21, so I'm going to try to finish this up by 3. I don't know if cover sketching is going to happen today because I feel like I just need to be done. I think I'm at my limit. Thank goodness working on my website for 15 minutes was one of my tasks. I was going to be doing other things on my website today, but clearly I'm fixing my email newsletter sign up page. That's what I'm doing right now.
Well, hello, 4,444 of you. <laughs> You're not all gonna be watching this video. That would be nice. But no, for, since, since I defended my dissertation, my PhD dissertation, and officially became Dr. Severson on 4-4, 2018, April 4th, four has kind of been a, a bit of a number for me. So to hit 4,444, <laughs> It's gonna probably go down um, and then go back up. So I don't know, but I don't know if I'll see 4444 again. So I should take a picture of this as well because it could go back down to like 4,443 and then go up to 4,445. And this might be the only time I see 4444. So that's exciting. Yay. Gosh. Again, like the book sales yesterday hitting a kind of fun milestone on YouTube today. I just, I talk about y'all in my acknowledgements for this book. So if you buy the book and read it, you can, you can look for that. But I just, I, I really am just so grateful for all of you. <laughs> um, you have no idea like how happy you make me when I refresh my YouTube dashboard or my sales dashboard and I see you know numbers go up or when I see a new comment come in from one of you on a video I like so much of this is like me just talking to the camera and there isn't that like live reaction and like with the books I sit here I write the books I edit them I publish them but I, I never really, like, I don't, I don't get to talk to you after you've read it. Like, you, you read it, and then you maybe leave me a comment or a review, and, and that's how I know what you thought of the book. Um, like, everything's done asynchronously. Nothing's, like, live in the moment. And so, I just, I, I, I don't know how to fully articulate it, but, like, you really do... You keep me company, like I, I think about you as I'm filming. Um, those of you who comment regularly, like I, I'm literally thinking of you in my head, knowing, you know, wondering, oh, what's Avi gonna think about this bit? Or, oh, what's Mandy gonna think about this bit? And yeah, like I just, it, it means so much. And so whenever I see the YouTube subscriber number go up, Again, it's like it's it's never just a number to me. You all are never just numbers. It's you know, oh, what new friend is hopefully going to introduce themselves in the comments. So, if you are a new subscriber in the past few weeks in particular, but if you are a new subscriber from the last few months and still haven't left at least one comment introducing yourself, I do reply to my comments. Sometimes it takes me a week or two but I do reply to every comment on every video um, so even if you're watching an old video leave a comment um, I love when people go back and watch videos from like three or four years ago and leave comments because it brings that video back up <laughs> in in my mind and and is a link then in YouTube that I can click to go like watch that video so yeah, I just, whenever I see the, the subscriber number go up, I just, I always hope, oh, I, I hope whoever these people are, I hope they leave a comment and introduce themselves and let me know a little bit about them. You all know so much about me from watching these videos. So I really do love it when you take a moment to introduce yourself and say hi in the comments and let me know what it was that made you click subscribe. So yeah, 4,444 inching ever closer to 5k. I, I feel like that would be a really lovely milestone to hit sometime this year. At the rate it's growing, I don't think that, well, maybe it would happen. No, no, it wouldn't happen this year. Would it? I mean, I'm if I'm growing around 47 people, 47 times, I think there's, we'll say six, but yeah, no, we wouldn't hit it this year. At this rate, we wouldn't hit 5K in 2024. And that's okay, because I'd rather grow slowly, but grow with lovely friends 
who become a you know wonderful part of this community then grow fast with people who don't really care about me or my content so slow and steady that's what we are all about here <laughs> but yeah that that seeing that number just made me very excited so where are we at with other stuff with book stuff I think the back matter is mostly done I'm not gonna cross it off my publishing checklist worksheet thing because I want to kind of cross it off once I've created it in vellum but I think my acknowledgments have got I think I've covered everyone in the acknowledgments that I need to thank well there's always that feeling of oh my gosh what if I'm forgetting someone <laughs> so yeah um I think I've got everyone covered so the acknowledgments is mostly done the author's note I'm still working on but I will I will finish that in vellum when I start formatting and that's fine I've got a good a good start there so I think on Monday I can start formatting this in vellum. If I look at my calendar, I wanted to format starting on July 22nd, and that would be Monday. So I think on Monday I can start formatting, Monday and Tuesday format, and then Tuesday potentially start proofreading. Proofreading I blocked out almost a full month. I could take less time so I might spend more time next week working on the cover like I just I really am struggling to like work on the cover while also working on the book data and I think working on the cover while also proofreading like I think I just need to like just work on the cover so I might tweak my schedule a little bit I did start, I've got my rough sketch and I did start making a more polished rough sketch. I need to sit down and like just really think about it and look at it. I think I'm starting to make the cover a little too detailed. I think I need to take a step back and make it just a little bit more suggestive and l less detailed. But also I have this vision in my head, <laughs> I just, I just want to do the vision I have. I don't want to compromise that, but I do worry that I'm being a little bit too ambitious with the illustration idea for the cover. So I think if I can take some time next week to just focus on that cover and sketching that more polished sketch, that might be a good thing. Because if it just takes me a little bit longer to sketch it, that's not a problem. Once the line drawing is done and I get it into Photoshop, coloring it in is the easy part so yeah anyway so we're making progress I feel good about this I, f I feel good about how this week is wrapping up it's just after three I think I am done I think I'm done I'm really tired so I don't think I want to do any more work on this I don't think I want to start sketching I just think I'm too tired to sketch but I, I feel like I'm back on track. I didn't do much work on it over this week. I Part of me feels like I should be a week ahead of where I'm at because I finished copy editing a week early, but I don't need to be ahead. I'm at least on track. That's the most important thing. And it's also really important that I let myself go rest for a little bit because it, it had working on my syllabus this week it really has been just a very brain intensive week this week I've had to do a lot of thinking and a lot of focus work to get my syllabi like to the point they needed to be to be able to submit them this week and I really wanted to do it this week even though they're not due until Monday I just wanted them submitted revisions done final approval before the end of this week so got that done yesterday feel really good about that looking at my task list for today the only things i haven't done yet today that i really do want to do today um there's one task that i'm just migrating to next week and that's fine but the one thing left to do is posting on instagram um so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna go crash on the couch and scroll on my phone and post to Instagram and, and have some fun over there for a little bit. If you don't follow me, I have both a kind of personal general life account that's got all the England photos from the trip, 
um, and that's just kind of my life in general. It's a public account, but it's kind of like my personal account, my personal stuff, that makes sense. And then I've got my author account. Um, and the author account has all the book updates and writing updates and things like that. So if you want to follow me over there, it's the only other like place on social media that I'm super active. I have a Facebook page. I rarely use it. I just share stuff from other platforms to the Facebook page. I have a Twitter don't really enjoy Twitter so again I just like share when there's a new vlog I post the link over on Twitter just in case um, but Instagram is where I tend to hang out and my author account I am trying to post more regularly on there as we get close to the launch of book four I can't believe we're getting close to the launch but we are and that's exciting that's what's keeping me going I'm so tired and I don't really want to be working on this book anymore I just want it to be done but I know that the more I work on it the sooner we will get it out the sooner I can stop working on it and you all can read it so yeah feel good I've been very productive today and that feels nice because <laughs> I've been struggling with feeling very productive most days. I feel like at the end of the day I'm just exhausted and I feel like today I'm I'm done working on things but I still feel okay so that's a good feeling and I'm gonna run with it. I'm gonna run with it all the way to the couch. <laughs> so. So I'm going to wrap this vlog up here. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Leave me some heart emojis to let me know which one of you lovely people have made it all the way to the end. Heart emojis for all of my love for you in writing my acknowledgments and just how loved you all have made me feel today with books being sold and people subscribing to my channel you all just make me feel so happy so thank you so i'm sending you all the hearts so you can leave me some heart emojis in the comments to let me know which one of you lovely people have made it all the way to the end of this vlog as you all are the real mvps question of the vlog i think question is really just who are you say hi. If you've said hi and you've introduced yourselves, say hi again. But if you've never introduced yourself um, or if you haven't left a comment in a while, uh, please leave a comment on this one just to remind me, just to let me know you're still here and you're, you're still watching because that really means a lot. So yeah, you can let me know some fact about you. So if you've already been writing and commenting what's something you haven't yet told me some fact about yourself you haven't yet told me I think that would be really fun for those of you who have been here and commenting for a while um, but also would give those of you who haven't yet said hi in the comments something to answer so I'm gonna go get on with a relaxing fun chilled out rest of my Friday afternoon and start of my weekend and I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye!